there was no level of awareness because at first I was told children with bi- do not get bipolar disorder. That the focus of the SHINE Initiative mission is children and young adults is really quite elemental, as half of all lifetime cases of mental illness begin by age 14. We live with it. My son has gone, gone through school. In eighth grade, they told me he'd never finished high school. Why am I wasting my time on a lazy kid? They told me that the kid, kid again, had to go through, kids don't get bipolar, that it's an adult disease, blah, blah, blah. I gave them all the book called The Bipolar Child, and I said, maybe you should read this because he's not your only child in this system that has bipolar. Kids being diagnosed with ADHD could have something different, could have another mental illness. What the McAllister family has endured is not unique. It is estimated that in the United States, 50 million people, children and adults, suffer from a diagnosable mental illness in any given year. Sadly, far more than half of all young people who suffer from mental illness are undiagnosed and untreated. On a personal level, I worked in education for nine years and I saw firsthand um, children that were labeled at as early as kindergarten um, as being troublemakers because of things that they had going on with them that were out of their control. And it, it, was, it was because of mental illness. Um, and that's not fair. That's not fair to anybody. And my son personally is affected by it. My son has ADD and he was diagnosed only when he hit like 11 years old. So for me, it, it's a top priority. Joyce is among the many employees of Fidelity Bank who were inspired in 2004 to make mental health the prime focus of their collective charitable giving. It's amazing how many people that this affects and it's, it's one of those silent diseases. I think we chose mental illness basically because it was something that nobody has addressed before. Um, there's such a stereotype attached to mental illness and we wanted to try to make an impact to make sure that that is eliminated at some point in time. Fidelity Bank, I've worked at several places, but Fidelity Bank has probably the most caring, giving employees I have ever seen. They, they take this cause to heart. Through fundraising efforts coordinated by the employees of Fidelity Bank and friends and patrons throughout the community, the SHINE Initiative has invested in programs that both raise awareness of mental illness and deliver services for young people and families throughout central Massachusetts. The children who are the focus of the intervention clearly benefit, but the other children in the classroom also benefit because when, for example, when there's a child in the classroom who has a lot of difficulty regulating uh, his or her emotions. So last year uh, we were in a kindergarten classroom with a child who had a lot of difficulty managing frustration and anger, would become very explosive. That affects the other 22 children in the classroom um, and it, it completely stops all learning when that child's having difficulty. So once we're able to figure out what interventions were needed to help support that child, to teach the child some new skills, uh, then the whole classroom environment changed and it became a much more calm place uh, and a better place for learning. A grant awarded by the SHINE Initiative to JFS has been administered by Dr. Greenberg to provide mental health consultation to students at two public elementary schools in Worcester. We are really actually working with the teachers in the school. So the teachers, the school counselors, the principal will identify children who are struggling in the classroom because of perhaps some delays in the development of their social skills or emotional skills. Uh, maybe there's some other things going on in their lives that we're not even privy to. And then we keep coming back throughout the school year to check in on the kids, check in on the teachers, the classrooms, and then tweak our interventions as needed. The Lemonster Public Schools are also mindful to address the total wellness of its students. Uh, we really want to focus on the uh, increasing uh, population of students that encounter some type of anxiety, whether it be from uh, situations at home or whether it be situations within uh, the schools, uh, and then ultimately uh, the uh, issues of depression. 
quite often they come to the nurse's office complaining of headaches, stomach aches, uh, they just don't feel good, it's, it's uh, very vague. And it takes us a while sometimes to uh, recognize that it's actually stress and not a physical illness. We're still trying to change attitudes. Uh, a lot of people, they hear uh, mental health and they, don't want, they really don't want to deal with it. It has a negative connotation. So we're trying to bring it into a global picture that your mental health affects your physical health, your emotional health, and uh, we need to work on all aspects together, not just one piece. Overall, anytime that there's a, uh, a focus on health and wellness, it benefits the population as a whole. But in, increasingly for students, uh, we've just recently identified a new health curriculum within our middle schools. And the reason that we've introduced that is primarily due to the fact that we know that that particular population is, uh, is vulnerable to not only their own physical and emotional changes, but also an awful lot of outside influences that they encounter during those particular uh, years and grades uh, 6, 7, and 8. And uh, we want to be able to counteract that through awareness and through a, an in-depth health initiative. With support from the SHINE initiative, several young adults from Genesis Club in Worcester have resumed their pursuit of higher education at Quinn Sigamon Community College and Worcester State University. The support on campus is just as important. So if an individual is struggling with core selection, or if an individual is struggling with a homework, or with a, a thesis, or with a, a attending, we're right on campus. We're providing uh, the support with helping them connect with the on-site counselors. We'll even talk to the professors in terms of maybe getting some type of extension if the individual needs that. But it's gone extremely well for us. Now, you only take two classes at a time because that's all I can handle. Uh, but right now I have 42 credits. I need 20 credits to graduate. And um, I get excited every time I start a new semester. Uh, my goal is to gain a degree so I can, can build off that and get a, a steady job. Because I, I ultimately want to go back to work. With support from the SHINE Initiative and others, Genesis recently helped 40 members enroll in colleges and universities in central Massachusetts. It's never too late to get an education, so I think the mixture of people helps a lot. So you'll always find someone you can relate to in one way or another. Nobody's perfect. Um, I've met a lot of people who have struggled with mental um, illness or addiction or they're just old and they stopped and they want to come back, whatever the case may be, but um, it's comforting knowing that you're not alone. With proceeds from events like Orchard Hills Athletic Club's Spin for Children's Mental Health, Fidelity Bank's Quarter Mile Campaign, Keep Your Mind Open, and Michael's 5K Run and Walk, the Shine Initiative has provided financial support to Genesis, Jewish Family and Children's Services, and other programs, including research projects that are taking aim at specific causes of mental illness. Michael's Run is, was established last year for the first time because we found the SHINE. The SHINE initiative was just what we were looking for, kind of, in doing something positive in Michael's name so that other children and teachers and the education of mental illness gets put out there. 20 years ago when he was diagnosed, it was clinical depression. That's what they diagnosed him as. Um, he was smart enough to know something wasn't right when he couldn't make it through a day of high school. He was, you know, he had everything. He was a captain of the football team, president of the class, and he just couldn't make it through a day. And the research, everything that's being done, the medications that are out there now are so much better than they were 20 years ago. Talking about it, helping, then, then other people don't feel like they're alone. There are many, many people, I bet everyone in, the fa in, in their family somewhere, there's been some sort of mental illness that they've either recognized or, or not wanted to recognize. But talking about it, getting it out there, and sharing it, it's like a giant support group, and that's what people need. Recognizing and addressing the mental health of young people while applying the proper interventions and services is important as they mature through life.
When I was asked to get involved with Shine, I was I was most intrigued with the um, their commitment and desire to reach out to the community to increase awareness and to increase education. And I think as an employer, if um, the people coming to work for my company um, are in a school system or have been brought up in a place where mental illness is not a phobia, mental illness is something that we um, that we work on and that we treat willingly, um, it goes a long way towards a happy and productive workplace. Shining a light on mental illness and becoming beacons of hope for young people is a message Rhonda McAllister invites each of us to share with families and communities everywhere. Well, he was diagnosed at eight. He didn't understand what it was. He just knew that some days he was very happy, at other times he was very angry, and he wouldn't know why. And at eight years old, he asked me to stop loving him so he could die. I think people need to pay more attention in be more aware that people don't choose to do what they're doing, that mental illness is a serious illness, as serious as cancer and other illnesses out there that we fight every day, we raise money to find answers for, and there's answers out there for mental illness. We just need to make people aware of the problem and that it is an illness and start doing a lot more research and stuff so that we can find a cure for mental illness.